are you you have you you have putting your own interpretation to the bible i am asking you did he promise that he the, the descendant of ishmael will be a great nation you did not give any historical evidence for that show me historical evidence that that f- f- promise was fulfilled you are going on to interpretation of your own interpretation okay, okay, okay. what are the words okay. right Was According to me, it's, it's spiritually and also by numbers. Yes. I should show you a, a specific person that the Prophet Sallallahu is from that person. No, I can't show you this. Okay. No, I can't show you this. Okay. All right. So you're live now. What did you want to say? Okay. Uh, you you are uh, making fun of me because I misspelled your name. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I already told you English is not my language. Maybe okay, I, I missed really your name or something else. I wasn't making fun of you. No, okay. I was, just, I was just having a little fun. I I said it's perfectly okay to misspell my name. So okay, no, okay. Well, let, let's come to the topic. Uh, yeah, yeah. You said you do not find a uh, Muhammad in the Bible. Okay. Correct. Okay. Did God promise Abraham that he was that he will make the descendant of Ishmael a great nation? Yes. Okay, in Genesis twenty-one, twenty-one, did this promise he fulfilled this promise? Yes, it's fulfilled within uh, Ishmael's own lifetime. Ishmael lifetime. Yep. Okay, can you open Galatians chapter four, verse number twenty-one? I sure can. As as he's pulling that up, uh, Shahid, do you remember what Genesis sixteen twelve says? Let's let's finish this one first. But then well, I figured. Well, you're you're going from Genesis to uh, the New Testament, so I figured I'd at least stay in Genesis. But go ahead. No, no they, this is the same word. Yeah, this got, is talking about Gal- the same word. Got Galatians four twenty one up. Tell yeah. me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen yeah. to the law? For it is written yeah. that Abraham had two sons, one by a yeah. slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son yeah. of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born according, was born through the promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. These two women are covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar yeah. is Mount Sinai for Arabia. She corresponds yeah, yeah. to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem okay. above is free, and she is our mother. So, what do you think this has anything to do with a great nation exactly? So, so Ishmael was living in Arabia, okay. Um, well, not according to the text, but yeah, I, I, he was he was the son of Agar. Agar was in Arabia, according to this verse. Okay, so in the broader so, con, so. In the broader context, yes, and the oh. general whole general area can be called Arabia. Um, the the word here is not an English word, obviously. It's in Greek, and they've chosen to translate it as Arabia. Yeah, he is in Arabia. This is clear from the words. <laughs> I just told you the whole entire region was referred to. He is in Arabia. This is clear from the words. <laughs> I just told you the whole entire region was referred to as Arabia. You're going to want to say that it's referring to Mecca so, specifically. So not, not, not. I'm saying that he is referred, but I'm talking about the descendant of Ishmael. So can you show me in, from the, from the history that the that the descendant of uh, Ibrahim, the son of Ishmael, they were a great nation. Can you show me anywhere in the history or in in the book of uh, in your Bible, can you show us any evidence? Yeah, if you read the Genesis narrative, you know where the promise comes from. It talks about the many descendants of Ishmael. That is the fulfillment of the promise. No, no, I am asking. Show me where did he made the great no, nation of has, it, we, we, we don't have any evidence from the history that the Ishmael I just have a great nation, except that. except except the Prophet Sallallahu Okay, first of all, you have no evidence that your prophet is related to Ishmael. Uh, second of all, 
I just told you the evidence from the Bible. It describes his many descendants. It describes the people groups which he founded. They. Can you let me finish? Can you let me finish? Okay, okay. The, the people groups that are descended from Ishmael are going to be the great nations that the nation of Israel is in conflict through throughout the biblical narrative. There is no need to go 3,000 years in the future and say it's fulfilled in Muhammad when it's fulfilled within the biblical narrative. And I don't know why you went to the Galatians. This doesn't have anything to do with anything. Uh, I, it, I, I, go to, I go to I go to Galatians because, because he was promised that he will make the great nation, but we do not find anywhere in the history okay. that the descent did the, the, the children of Ishmael become a great nation. You, I, you do not show me. For, you, well, I, I am asking you show me from the history that the the descendant of Ishmael they have become a great nation. We are dear, can you show us in the history? Well, according to your you. actually, sorry, go ahead. Because go ahead. all the prophets in the in the in the Bible they have been explained in details, but they, there is no details of the descendant of Ishmael. And there is no historical uh, evidence that, that the nation of uh, Ishmael they have a great nation. Where is there? I will. I already told you that it's throughout the biblical narrative that the people groups that are descended from Ishmael are the nations that are in conflict with Israel. They are great nations. They are the enemies of Israel. And then you say because the word because you want to go to Galatians because it has the word Arabia. That's all. The only reason you wanted to go there. It says, let me give an allegorical interpretation. Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. So according to you, because he says that Hagar is Mount Sinai, and he happens to use the word Arabia, that somehow that has something to do with Muhammad. That, that's your argument. My argument is that in Arabia, there is a one, only one prophet, a great nation, which is the Muslims. It, it, that's why I'm, I'm referring why, why to the talking about a prophet. Why are you talking about a prophet? He, there's no promise of a prophet. There is a promise of a, that I will make you into a great nation. That promise was oh, fulfilled no. in Isaiah. In Isaiah and it was fulfilled in Isaiah. What, what, Isaiah. What, 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 was it was was it was Lily? Was Abraham a prophet? What does that have to do with anything? Because his descendant must be prophet. Is a great, no, I'm, I'm not going on your wild goose chase. The promise is to make a great nation. Great, a great nation. nation. Nothing Forward. about you will be Forward. a prophet. Nothing about your descendant 4,000 years, 3,000 years later will be a prophet. Nothing about Muhammad. This is all your imagination. All the text says is you make a, I'll make your you into a great nation. That means you will have many descendants and they will be politically important in that area. In the, the he, immediate this, future, this is talking. This is only talking about the two two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac, he had already made a covenant with him, but he didn't fulfill the the promise with Abraham of Ishmael. How I I already told what you. you mean, show me from You just keep telling you. Are, you, you, you you are referring only to the biblical state the uh, text. Yeah, I'm and, referring to the biblical narrative. That's where you got the thing. Promise from in the first place. If you can go to the biblical narrative for the promise, I certainly can go to the biblical narrative for the fulfillment of the promise. No. Don't, don't tell me that, that I have to. Plus, you can't, you have zero, zero evidence that your prophet is related to Ishmael. The so Quran you, seems you, to think he's related you, to so Isaac. You, you, no, you are denying your own Bible. It's, it's no, clear from the I'm denying your idiotic interpretation. You are making your own interpretation to the text. This is why you are not accepting it. You are, you are, you are. All right, he's muted. Go what ahead. Is, what? Is, how do you? How do you spell gaslit? <laughs> Trying to gaslight you very badly in in uh, Arabic. I'm not really sure how to do that. So he he decided he's he's made quite a few mistakes here, and you've answered him wonderfully, Thaddeus, and correctly, and he has yet to. Um, actually in, interact with what it is that you're saying, but go ahead and stay. Don't, don't change. Don't change. Stay in that one spot. Um, stay in Galatians. Yeah. 
So he decided oh, he wanted to go to, to Galatians. To Genesis, but, no, that's yeah, fine. And, and and we can go back to Genesis, but I, I want to, since he decided to take us to Galatians, let's go ahead and go to, to Gala, uh, Galatians, right? Mm -hmm. So the son of the slave was born according to the flesh. Mm -hmm. um, so first and foremost, right, if, if he wants to make this argument that Ishmael or that Muhammad is the descendant of Ishmael, then that means that um, the entire nation of of uh Arabia, right? And I, I don't believe that this is exactly what it's saying, but if he's going to go with this literal interpretation of it, um, this means that they should be slaves. They should be slaves. And let's say, well, you know, we, we name our kids slave of Allah. And so, okay, great. Um, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and one by the free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh. Um, when we go back into Genesis, Right, I'm going to go through the story, and hopefully, Shahid, you're actually listening here, buddy, um, and you are muted. So just please listen, and we'll unmute you whenever, whenever uh, we're finished making our point. We'll let you make your point, of course. Uh, but when, when, whenever we go into the accounts, Abraham was promised to have many sons, numbering the stars of heaven, the sands of the seashore, and he was promised to have this son through whom, Thaddeus. He was promised to have this um, son through his wife, and his then wife. he who Sarah, Sarah, and okay. then he said that well, she's old. I, I need to have a son a different way. Yeah. So he he went. He didn't really believe God's promise, mm -hmm. and he he and Sarah. Now to be clear, it's consensual here, right? He's not Correct. going behind Sarah's yep. back. Yep. He and Sarah said. Uh, you know, why don't you uh, impregnate this younger woman, Hagar, mm -hmm. um, who is my slave, who is Sarah's slave. Um, therefore, you know, it, it's a legitimate relationship uh, right. because, you know, it, you can legitimately claim the, the child as your own heir is what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say um, um, be, because of the, the legal relationship between Sarah and Hagar. Right. And H Hagar is a slave or a servant right and where did where did um abraham and sarah pick her up from where is she from where is her homeland egypt egypt all right so she's egyptian correct mm -hmm. so she's mm -hmm. an egyptian slave woman all right so they uh uh sorry abraham and sarah disobey god and they decide that that what they are going to do is the way that it should be done they disobey god and Hagar is caught in the middle of this, and she has a son named Ishmael. Is Ishmael the promised son? So in Sarah and Abraham's opinion at the time, they're, they're thinking this is how the promise will be fulfilled. Okay. But then God comes and he explicitly says, this is not what I promised. Because, because of my relationship with you, Abraham, I will bless Ishmael, but he is not the promise. He is not the person from whom the whose line the promise will be fulfilled. Exactly. Bingo. Right. And so it is not through his line. Right. So mankind, first of all, the, the, the reasoning behind this is that mankind can mess up. Right. They can disobey God and God can still bless whatever it is that they messed up. That's one of the messages. But the other message is that was not the intention of God. What God's intention was, was for Sarah, the free woman, to have a son by Abraham so that the promise of the promised land, of the message that would bless all nations, all nations are blessed through which nation, Thaddeus? Which nation are all nations going to be blessed through? Uh, through the nation that comes from Isaac. Right, which is, it, it, we, is we know Israel. now, which yeah. is Israel, right? So. Um, uh, we uh, let me well I'll, I'll let you kind of go ahead here i've got some other things to say but i don't want to get i don't want to get too far away before we let uh shahid uh, give us yeah let's response. go ahead and let him respond shahid you're back on up live yeah. please please don't you, yell. why why do you muted me yes i have because no you time and you are you you have you you have putting your own interpretation to the bibles i am asking you did he promise that he, the, the descendant of Ishmael will be a great nation. You did not give any historical evidence for that. 
show me historical evidence that that promise was fulfilled <laughs> you are going under interpretation of your own interpretation okay, to I, got the, it, the I got it i got it i got it so show, show me in historical and you historical you yourself please you don't need to say everything four times okay? you are not answering my question i, I was I, I, nobody can answer, answer you when up. you're yapping yeah okay so ask your question then stop talking then i can answer don't don't ask your question and then immediately say you're not answering me, but you don't give me a chance. So please define what you mean by historical evidence. Yeah, go give me from uh, evidence from history that the promise of uh, I, God with Abraham was fulfilled. Show me. I'm I'm asking. So you said show me historical evidence. I'm asking what you consider historical evidence. It's a simple question. Uh, what, what from would you the history, valid proof? outside outside from the bible show me okay, from the so, history so why do i have to show you something from outside the bible but you you don't have because i am asking you a specific question show me from the history that the promise was fulfilled oh, show me from history outside the bible that abraham existed we both agree abraham was a very important prophet show I, me outside I have the bible him. Show me outside the Bible that Abraham exists. I, I, I am, I am, I am making my arguments from the Bible, and then when he was promised according to the according to the scripture, but you do not show me any evidence from the Bible. I am asking you also from the Bible that the children of Ishmael was a great nation. You do not have any evidence from the Bible. You do not have any evidence from the history, and you are going and putting your own interpretation to the uh, to the text. I am specifically asking a simple question from the uh, from your Bible. Show me that this promise was fulfilled, and show me also from the history. If you could, cannot find from in the in the Bible, show me in the history. Okay, you don't need to repeat yourself over and over again. Again, just make your point and stop. You don't need to say it three times. So make up your mind. When I told you what the Bible says, you said go to something outside the Bible. So is the Bible acceptable evidence or not? If you are not able to to give me reference from the Bible, then I ask you show me fr from the history. You do not have any evidence for that. I didn't say I couldn't make you a reference from the Bible. Show me. Yes, I will. So okay. let me. So Ishmael's descendants are described in Genesis. I got to check what chapter, but we'll go there. You know, I don't have all the references memorized. You uh, can go Genesis only to Isaiah. For no, I, I'm not only going. I'm not going to go just to the the verses that you tell me to go to. We can look at all of the evidence. So here is Genesis 17:20. For as for Ishmael, I heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly he shall father 12 princes and i will make him into a great nation but i will establish my covenant with isaac whom sarah shall bear to you at this time next year the passage is telling you exactly what god is going to do it tells you exactly what great nation means that he will that uh, ishmael will be blessed with many children Specifically, he'll father 12 princes. That's what it means. Why are you interpreting great nation as a prophet? That he'll have a prophet many, many okay, years what, in the future. That's his decision. Okay, what does that have to do with being a great nation? What does the word okay, great mean? What is according to me, it's, it's spiritually and also by numbers. So you say that the word great here means great means spiritually he will make him spiritually numbers. great and also will in numbers. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, the Hebrew word is gadol. I'm going to pull up the lexicon, which will tell us what the word means. Okay. So okay, let me if you don't mind me jumping in here real quick. Yep. Shahid, you need to be consistent with your arguments, right? So you're you're demanding of us that we prove things either biblically or extra biblically with sources thaddeus just asked you a question and you answered literally by saying in my opinion 
That's true. So I just uh, want to I, I just want to point uh, that out that that's your me, opinion and that's fine. But I just want to point out that if you're going to demand certain things from us, a certain standard, then I would appreciate it if you're willing to hold yourself to the same standard. I just want to say that. And I just want to point that out. Um, I will pause and 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 mute myself up here again. Uh, well, Thaddeus right. goes ahead goes ahead and explains. So he, here are all the definitions of great, what it can be applied to in HEMA, right? So great in size. We see how that one would make sense. Great in height, as in a mountain, that obviously doesn't make sense. In extent, in number, number makes sense within the passage. In weight, obviously doesn't make sense. In significance, in volume, in influence, in collocations, in fixed expressions, uh varia which uh is a specialized hebrew term um and then it can also mean god that is great so the term can be used to describe god's attributes it can be described in a, a specialized hebrew phrase or it can be used in the way english word used great is for you know uh, size height number the passage itself tells us how to understand it it tells us that it should be understood is number that he will raise a great nation as in a a nation of a large number of people that ishmael will have many descendants and that they will found a new nation that is what the context makes sense you'll notice that i did not read anything that says anything about spirituality stood is number that he will raise a great nation as in a a nation of a large number of people that ishmael will have many descendants and that they will found a new nation that is what the context makes sense you'll notice that i did not read anything that says anything about spirituality let alone prophethood um so I have supplied a source for why I believe the passage is describing the the large nations that will come from Ishmael. And if we read on in Genesis, it will eventually say the specific names of the 12 people, uh, the, the 12 uh, princes. And then we will see that the nations that they founded, i.e. that are named after them, occur again and again in the biblical narrative. Um, now it's your turn to give me a reason to believe that this passage is a promise of a future prophet okay if i broke in the middle because my uh, battery the uh, cell phone battery is getting down so i uh, i ask you and you go to the meaning and here and here i am simply ask a simple question that this promise that he will make the nation of ishmael a great nation this is in numbers not in anything else you are going around in here Okay, I am asking. This is about numbers. He will make a great nation in numbers. Can you show yeah. me the evidence from the Bible or outside from the Bible that they have made a great nation? The the, the uh, descendant of Ishmael. Can you uh, show me any evidence? Uh, sure, we can go. We can go through the entire biblical narrative and and see how many times the people groups that will be descended from Ishmael occur. <laughs> in the biblical narrative okay. if you really want to can you name the descendant of ishmael first yeah i gotta look up yeah. where it, it yeah. names them genesis uh, 25 oh. genesis 25 okay thank you so you already know that the bible names them well i know what are you, what are you disputing with me then yeah i'm disputing but there is nothing mentioned the descendant of ishmael that they have a great nation except one this is called Kedar. Okay, he okay, was the so second son of uh, he was the second son of Ishmael, and the lineage of the Prophet Sallam is directly go to Kedar. You just told me that Kedar is a great nation. You just said that Kedar is a great nation. Therefore, it was fulfilled in Kedar. I am Maybe. not telling you that Kedar was a, a great nation. There is no you, evidence you, that Kedar was. You want me to, but the you descendant want me to of Kedar. I, why you? Why you are breaking the things? But I ask you, just say, give me the example. Give me evidence from that. But I'm waiting. So, so. Uh, we we have the the twelve sons of Ishmael here, already showing that God has fulfilled the first aspect of the promise that he will have 12 sons and he will have 
Now, it just before we go look anywhere else, just think about this, okay? God said that you're going to have many descendants. You'll start with 12 sons, and then they'll have many children. If someone has 12 sons, just, just without any other evidence, is it very likely that they'll have a lot of grandchildren or that they'll only have one or two grandchildren? He has 12 sons. I'm, from these 12 sons, give me any evidence that uh, there is a great nation among these okay. 12 sons. Thaddeus, you mind if I step in here real quick, buddy? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So if you go to um, Genesis 17, 20, what you're going to see is as for Ishmael, this is Yahweh speaking, I've heard you and I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and multiply him and he will become the father of 12 rulers. I will make him into a great nation. So the explicit reference here uh, in terms of what great means is multiply him greatly and fruitful meaning that he will have many descendants it's exactly what thaddeus said and this answers your question yeah this, this is mean in numbers and i i'm asking him show me that the descendant of ishmael they have a great nation in numbers he do not provide any that's, evidence that's to be in the bible, bible from the bible read and from the history i just read okay. it to you it's fine. It's fine. We'll, we'll go slow. So you said that I could go to the Bible or history. So I'm just going to go to Kadar, since that's the one that you already told me was a great nation. And I'm going to go to history. I, I could go to the look at the examples in the Bible and how they're repeatedly are and that Ishmael's various sons and their descendants are very are often enemies of Israel. But since you've acknowledged Kadar, we're just going to go with that. And oh, sorry, I, I did not share in the right window. So let me let me share correctly this time. <laughs> so we have the Wikipedia article on the Kedarites, a group known from history. The Kedarite kingdom, or Kedar, was largely nomadic, ancient Arab, Arab tribal confederation described as mostly organized, the most organized of the Northern tri Arabian tribes. At the peak of its power in the sixth century BCE, it had a kingdom that controlled a vast region of Arabia. Sounds like a great nation to me. What do you think, Astro? I, I think so as well. And to to also indicate the northern part, wait, like you just mentioned here, if you go to Genesis 25, 18, it says Ishmael's descendants settled from Halva to Shur, which is near the border of Egypt as you go towards Asher. And they lived in hostility toward all of their brothers. All right. So again, Ishmael's descendant uh, descendants settled near the border of Egypt. Okay, so near we, the border we, of Egypt. I wonder why that would be. Where's Hagar mm -hmm. from again? Yeah, we, we have a map here in Wikipedia article showing where they, the region of their kingdom was. Didius, oh, I ask oh, specifically, oh, Didius, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I, I ask you a specific question. You do not show me any evidence that the nation of Ishmael, they have a great nation and he, he will make him a fruitful nation. What does it mean by fruitful? <sighs> Fruitful I, that uh, you do not show me any evidence. You are going I here just, and there. Yeah. Why you are not stick to the point? I am asking. Give me any evidence from the history. You do not provide it. Give me evidence from the Bible. You do not provide it. It means you are you are failed to provide any evidence from the Bible and also from the from the Bible. You are going here and there and just making your own argument. So you're very good at making assertions that I'm not answering your question. You're not very good at listening, however. I listen to you. Yeah. You should you do read me articles from the from from the Wikipedia, and you do not show me evidence that the nation was a great nation. What was their fruit? What was their teaching? What they teach? They do, do not show me anything. Okay, nobody said yeah. anything about teaching. We said it was in numbers. We showed you from the Bible where it explicitly I, it is, says. It is it is mentioned that the I have fruit. Please I will make them. I will. Please stop interrupting. Go ahead, Astro. No, I mean, I was just, I was just trying to say, and hopefully he's able to listen, right? We've already established for him that um, Ishmael, the, the the word great, right, never said anything about spiritual, and he even admitted that um, the it was in his opinion that that's what great meant. 
when we go to the context and the um, uh, the meanings, the possible meanings of the word used in, in Hebrew, none of it has anything to do with what he said. What it has to do with, and specifically the, the verses that we have quoted to him, is it has to do with the numbers of his descendants. Fruitful people, right? Ishmael will be fruitful. He will have um, uh, many, uh, I, and uh, Yahweh says, God says that he will greatly multiply his offspring. That's how we do proper hermeneutics. That is how we read for context. The context of the passage of, of what great means, it means great in number. We can actually even contrast that with the promise made to Isaac. And the same thing is the same type of language is being used. He will be fruitful. He will multiply. His descendants will be like the numbers of the stars. The word great in this context means great in number. So I'm not sure why he keeps asking about a, a nation and things like that. Um, there are plenty of northern uh, Arabian slash east of Egypt um, nations that we can we can list throughout the history of time um, that would be considered a great nation. At the same time, as you mentioned earlier, Thaddeus, it's impossible for him to even track himself or Muhammad back to the descendants of Ishmael. And even in the region that is shown there on the picture, the region of who would be considered the Ishmaelites does not reach far south enough to even get to Mecca in general. So the assertions that he is making are great stories, but they don't have any actual historical backing. They don't uh, relate to any of the writings in the Bible. And everything that we have done to this point has demonstrated using proof, right? We're looking at maps, we're pulling up Bible verses, and his best argument right now is to just continue to say the same thing, you have not showed me this, you have not showed me that. When in fact, it's clear to us, it's clear to you, it's clear to the audience, we have literally showed him everything that he has asked for. Now, uh, I'm, yep. I'm done with my little bit. And yep, I will... so I, I just want to reiterate that you told me to go to any, his, any source inside or outside the Bible. I first went to the Bible, showed that he had 12 sons, and I was trying to talk you through logically. Um, but then you started yelling at me that, that Kedar was a great nation. Kedar was the only of the 12 that had a, a great nation. Then you said that you had misspoken. You didn't actually mean that. Fine, you didn't mean that. But history tells us in fact that the Keterites were a historical people that were substantial in size uh, now historians don't necessarily believe the biblical narrative but uh, if you're going to say Kedar is a real like they would might say that Kedar is not a real person right historians might say that but the Kedarites existed the Kedarites were a great nation so if you're if we're taking the biblical narrative seriously and you have to say Kedar is a historical person because as you just pointed out this is who Muhammad supposedly is descended from then the nation that bears his name was indeed a great nation you're you're back on Iqbal, you can or Shahid you can uh, speak now if you like so what I can speak, you will not provide any things you are making your own interpretations of uh, why why I mentioned this uh, prophecy because it is mentioned in the Quran in chapter 22, verse number 78. And God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tells the Prophet that this religion of your is the religion of your father Abraham, and the Abraham is uh, the lineage from Ishmael, the last prophet Muhammad sallam, is from uh, Ishmael. Can you pull out the ones chapter 22 was uh, 78 yep I can this is the, this is, yeah this is the great nation which the kid rights you are talking about kid rights for a great nation this is what i mentioned that kedar kedar was the uh, descendant yeah kedar yeah but i don't remember anybody saying kedar but go ahead there is nothing so mentioned in kedar but he is promised that this islam is the religion of his forefather ibrahim and this is the great nation which was promised to Ibrahim. Uh, so, at least the, the first source I have here, they're either using a different numbering system or you have the wrong reference. You 22 said 2278? Isn't about Ishmael or. It's a very long verse. Read all the verse. 
Uh, strike. Okay, I'll read it. Strive in the cause of the law in a manner worthy of striving. He has chosen you, and he has not laid upon you any hardship in religion. Keep to the faith of your father Abraham. Is, so is that what you're referring to, that portion there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's telling so, you this. He says that Islam is the religion of your father. And the lineage of the Prophet is directly go to the uh, uh, Ibrahim okay. Alayhi okay. Um, and this is where, this is you mentioned yourself the Kedarites and the, from the Arab the Kedarites from Arab and there is only one person which come in the Arab and was make a great nation also and he was a fruitful nation and also was a great nation in numbers there is no any other one in history and biblical uh, again again you're uh, very good at repeating your assertions over and over again can you show me uh, any historical or Quranic evidence that 2278 is talking about Ishmael? This is this is you talking about the, the to the Prophet Muhammad that Ibrahim was your father. Your father. This is direct reference. This is direct reference to the, the you, this is direct reference to Ibrahim can you, can, can, can you calm down? Calm down. Take, take it slow. I, I didn't say that this isn't related to Muhammad. Pay attention to the question I'm actually asking you. Can yeah, you this, is this is that the son the, the, of Abraham that's being referenced is Ishmael. Or are you just adding your own interpretation oh, to the Does Abraham have sons? He has Ishmael. more than yeah. one. Yeah, son. and Ishmael have sons. He asked you a question. And you're not. Yeah, so you want question. that I should show you a, a, a specific person that the Prophet is from that person? No, I can't show you this. Okay. So, so not, you know this is not your show interpretation. But thank you for admitting this that. This is not my interpretation. This is the direct words directed to the Prophet. God is directed. Uh, it, giving uh, the, you're, you're correct that the Quran claims that Muhammad is descended from Abraham. It does yeah. not claim that he's descended from Ishmael. So your argument doesn't even get off the ground because you're, you're assuming that the Quran believes that Muhammad is descended from Ishmael and the Quran doesn't actually say that. It could be referring to so, Isaac. So, so we, we from history, we know from the biblical narrative that Ibrahim has a son, Ishmael, and Ishmael was promised in the book of Genesis you, that his descendant, his descendant will be a great nation. And the Prophet ﷺ is from the descendant of Ishmael. So what, what evidence, no, what evidence, no, you, what all, evidence you more you need? You don't, first of all, you don't get to make that assertion. You have to provide evidence that Muhammad is descended from Ishmael. Second of all, we've explained to you from the context, great nation means having many descendants. We've shown you from history that indeed Ishmael had many descendants and that a great nation in influence as well was already raised up. You are just assuming that great nation means there'll be a future prophet and there's no justification for that whatsoever. So until you show me where the phrase a great nation means a future prophet in your descendants many years down the line, you don't even have the beginnings of an argument. You're just asserting, you're just asserting that you know what great nation means, even though that's not even an interpretation that Hebrew offers for the word great. So what what do you what is your understanding of the verse of Genesis which he promised to uh, the God promised with uh, Ibrahim? What what do you mean by this? What do, you, what do you mean? What is my interpretation? We've, We've gone over that you, you, multiple are, times. you are putting your own interpretation to the no, text. That's why I'm no, asking no, you. To... No, no, I am not. I am no, not. This is, no, 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 no. I am exegeting. No, 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 no I you are you, you, you are just, you are just playing, playing. Okay. Um. Uh, projecting okay. what you're doing is not yes. the same as what we're actually doing. Let me let me explain. Let me explain to you the difference. Right? We're looking at the context. We're looking at how the phrase is used in context. What a great nation means in context. Where 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 this? Stand up, Muhammad. Stand up. I I I I see people in the Excuse me. No problem. And so so we are explaining what. The, we are giving our meaning out of the text. We are looking at it where it says, I will multiply you greatly. 
I will give you many descendants. I will raise a great nation. And we're, we're saying all these terms mean the same thing because that's how normal interpretation means. You look at the context, you determine what means. Sorry, I, he's, he's muted now. I'll unmute him when it's a turn to talk, but too much background noise. Um, so we're, we're looking at the text. We're looking at the context. We're saying that the word should make sense in context. What you're saying is whatever I believe the text means, that's what it means. And then you're accusing me of saying that. No, I'm the one that's looking at the context you're, and providing you evidence that my interpretation, if you want to call it my interpretation, even though it's clearly the plain meaning of the text, was fulfilled. You have not provided any evidence that the word great can mean spiritual. You have not provided any evidence that Muhammad is descended from Ishmael. You have not provided any evidence that the phrase great nation means a future prophet. So one of us is indeed reading their imaginary interpretation into the text. But I'm sorry, sir, it's not me. You may speak. Okay. Okay, no problem. If you are not satisfied, this is it's upon you. But I already give you. I already give you. <laughs> you, you didn't give me anything. You gave me literally nothing. Excuse me. I have a stamp. A stamp for work. Okay. okay. I will. I will contact okay. later on. Okay. Okay. Sorry. okay. 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 All right. Well, that was. <laughs> So that, that was what very, I expected. I, yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm sure he legitimately has to work. I, I'm not. No, not certainty. the work part. I'm saying just how the conversation. Yeah. Went. Uh, that was very interesting. You know, I read the text, I interpret the text based on the context, and I am just making stuff up. Like I said, he's very good at at, at uh, asserting over and over again his position. He did not provide me any evidence. He didn't answer any of my questions. And no, then he, he says, before he had to go, I think he was about to say, you know, I provided you ample evidence. If it's not good enough for you, that's your problem. Yeah. Um, which, he didn't provide me anything. He provided me a single Quran verse that doesn't even mention Ishmael uh, or talk about any great nation or anything else. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly how we're coming.